All right, well, like I said before we uh, officially kicked it off here, we have a ton of Apple stuff to talk about this week. I know that seems strange because it doesn't seem like there really should be that much Apple news, but can you believe the... Was it Monday that the One More Thing event was announced, or was it Thursday of last week? I can't even remember. Everything <laughs> is just... Everything is just, all the days are, are falling into one another. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I didn't even know what day it was yesterday. And uh, there is a ton of stuff that's happening. Like I said, we have our first glimpse, potentially, of the new AirPods. Uh, we have some news on what you can expect from next week's One More Thing event. I mean, we pretty much, from what I can tell, we pretty much know exactly what's going to be announced. And there's some really exciting details about the Macs that are going to be announced, so... Stay tuned for that. And let's see here. We, oh, I can't forget about this. I think that there is a lot more happening with AirTags than we've been told. And <gasps> I know that seems like I'm just tweaking you there to get you excited. But I have some documents that I'd like to review for you, with you. Some might even call this a dossier. A dossier that I'll be re reviewing with you that shows you Apple's plans for AirTags. And this, the little tags that, that you've been shown, that's just the start of it. There's going to be a whole entire product line of stuff if, if these patents end up being true. And not only that, but the AirTags are going to do way more than we've, than we've been shown. I mean, some real interesting stuff. So we'll cover all this stuff. Hopefully this won't be uh, too long of a mega show. And we're all just going to kick back. We're going to take our minds off of what's going on and, uh, and just talk about some gadgetry for a while. Before we do that, let me give a very hearty thank you to Squarespace for supporting this episode. Squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. You know, it's a great time to build a website. If you still don't have one, you can build a website in mere moments on Squarespace. And the thing that I like about it is they make it dead simple. And yet, your, your website is going to look beautiful. It's going to look great on any device, any device that visits your website because they auto-scale everything magically. You can build it and maintain it all by yourself because you're not going to need any help from anyone else because it's all drag and drop. It's like literally the easiest website that I've ever built. And yet... It's completely customizable. I mean, you can dive in super deep, change everything, change images, change the positions of all the elements, change fonts, and the website will look uniquely yours. You can build a blog. You can build an impactful one-page website that will just highlight your skill set. You can build an online store. You can build a, a website for your business, and it's going to look great. It's going to be easy to update, so you'll actually keep your website up to date. Check it out, squarespace.com forward slash cultcast to, to get started and build your own website. And after the two-week free trial, you can use code cultcast at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase at squarespace.com forward slash cultcast. And the offer code to use is cultcast. I bet you guys could probably, I bet our listeners could probably do that. <laughs> Squarespace spot, <laughs> even without me. It's like a concert when you go to and like the singer just stops singing and just holds the mic out to the audience <laughs> and they just do it. We should try that, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I bet that there's a, little, there's a lot of listeners that can literally do that here. Uh, shout out to Sajid and Jayanth and Ayazi. That kind of sounds like a sneeze. Shout out to all the uh, new people here. This is going to be a politics-free stream where we just talk about Apple. So welcome Let's dive right into it. Let's see, where are we starting? Oh, big reminder, big reminder. iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone 12 mini, HomePod mini, they go on sale tomorrow morning. I know it's easy to forget. I had completely forgotten this. I did too, yeah. <laughs> because, really? you know, by tomorrow, America is probably going to look like that po post-apocalyptic -apoc scene from I Am, e uh, I Am uh, the Book of, e of Eli. Have you guys seen that movie with Denzel Washington where he crawls out of the rubble and it's like there's just a vast wasteland where everything has been scorched? <laughs> Jeez. Assuming that doesn't happen, you're going to want to get your hands on iPhone 12 Pro Max. goes on sale tomorrow. iPhone 12 mini, HomePod mini, 5 a.m. Pacific know, Standard 5 Time. 5 a.m.? Brutal oh 5 a.m. Yeah, really? that's a little... You think, yeah, you think we, I get up at 8? Or even 10 and do it? Sure. 
Yeah, no problem. You'll yeah. just be have getting... one by January. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> January, that's actually kind of early. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, well, how how quick did they sell it last time? It was it was within minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, it's going to be pretty fast for the iPhones. I think the HomePod Mini may not sell out at all because that's going to be a device that a lot of people under appreciate. If you ask me, I'm ordering two right off the bat. And by the way, I think the new version of iOS shipped today, which unlocks, is it iOS 14.2, which unlocks the potential of the new intercom feature on HomePod and the new, I think the new Dolby and surround sound functionality of the HomePod. Dudes, I'm just telling you, having two HomePods in front of your TV when you're watching The Mandalorian is going to blow your gourd open. It, I've already been testing it. Wow. It, the HomePods are some of my favorite devices. I'm not going to go on and on and on because you already know, and I don't want to <laughs> tell you. Are. I don't want to dive into this again. Did you check out the, the Atmos, the surround sound That's stuff? the that one thing that I haven't checked out yet is the uh, Atmos. I see. So you're waiting for this update. Uh, yeah. So, well, I was waiting for the update, but I have been testing out the intercom, which works. It's interesting. It doesn't work perfectly, like, like yeah. I mentioned last week. <laughs> but uh, the HomePod Mini review is going to be underway as soon as I get those. So as soon as I get the HomePod Minis in, HomePods are going in front of the television, and uh, HomePod Minis are joining me here in the Cult Command, where our, I will be listening to hours and hours of pretty much the exact same song. It's just the Dr. Disrespect song of him singing, Gillette, a best a man can get. Did I just give you the chills, Lewis? Did I give you the chills? Give me the somethings. <laughs> the runs maybe more like yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> it is a phenomenal song if you if you haven't heard it yes uh let's see here d saying ios 14.2 and it's out but you need the apple tv 4k not the regular apple tv well i just assume everyone's That's what breaks my heart i do not have that yet you don't have the apple tv 4k no, and how, who can buy one now? you got to wait for the next one. Jeez. Well, it's another dilemma. Who knows when that's going to be out? Y- you could be waiting six months before that the comes out. The day after I buy a 4K. Actually, 15 days after I buy a 4K. Yeah, yeah probably right. It'll, it will be right outside your, your return window. I think you should just go ahead and get one. You can get them for so cheap now. They'll probably be available on Black Friday for, I don't know, 80 bucks would be my guess. And 80? Yeah, probably. Really? Is, that, is that too much? 80 bucks, Lewis? No, I, I can't bl- believe they'd be that cheap. You know what happened when I told Frodo how much that was going to cost? Look at his face. Look how surprised he is right there. He's in <laughs> utter disbelief. $80 for an Apple TV? Oh, Sam. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Should I get it closer to the camera? <laughs> Close he, enough, I think. Yeah, even Gandalf is, he's puzzled. He can't believe how cheap it is. Look at him. Speaking of he's great names. Too. Look at that. Holy moly. Yeah, so I'll be testing that out. Uh, let's see here. This this didn't uh, didn't you hear that they didn't they want Sean Connery for the role of Gandalf? I heard that they originally offered it to him. Yeah, and he turned it down. Because he, uh, what was the reason why? It was something weird, wasn't it? I think it's because he read the story and he was completely <laughs> puzzled as to why anyone would ever want to watch a movie about this topic. <laughs> I think you can make a pretty convincing Gandalf if you ask me, Lander. Look at you, longer beard. You've already got the accent. <laughs> Put the I white can cast a few s- spells. <laughs> you are you are certainly charming, and enchanting. Some would say. Put the white wig on you. Oh my goodness, you're ready to go. I mean, I'm don't ready. you mostly walk around in just a robe anyway, like the like, <laughs> exactly. like you the dude. Open, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't even know where my robe tie is. It's been lost for years. <laughs> I don't even bother. <laughs> I used to use a rope, but uh, then a bum stole it. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, where, where are we? This is already... Oh, that was just a reminder. Oh, my gosh. Okay, uh, Lewis, can you kick us off here and tell us about AirPods? Because it looks like we got our first look at AirPods, and they look... Well, they look pretty much exactly what I was describing last week when I was pitching to Tim Cook the changes that they need, they need to make, and here we go. Take us away there, Lewis. Yeah, it could have been the first look... Um the third generation AirPods reportedly will look very similar to AirPods Pro. And new photo that popped up online this week may give us our first glimpse of the new design. And AirPod is going to be thrilled. Uh, this image was posted by the website 52 Audio. I'm actually not familiar with that website, but uh, anyway, uh, image shows what could be the top of the AirPods 3 and the sort of top of the 
cover for the charging case. Uh, the main thing to take away from it is it looks like the AirPods Pro, but it does not have those tipless tips. Tipless. Yeah, and, tip, tipless and is the word you're looking for, what, I guess. What was the main message that I broadcast <laughs> to Tim last week? Do you remember what I said? I Who's said, tips, you keep right? your dirty hands off my tips, <laughs> Tim Cook. Well, hey I'm, looking at that picture, I'm looking at that picture right now, and yeah. I can't really see what's going on, to be honest. Where is the... Um... Okay, look. I'm showing you guys... Am I still in browser mode? I'm showing you well, guys that, another image right now, because this was another one from Apple Track that they just posted. Here, I'm going to post this in the, uh, in the uh, Slack so that you guys can see this image as well. So here is a better picture or a more complete picture of what the AirPods will look like here. Am I in browser mode? There we go. Yeah. Check that out. Is that not literally <laughs> the most beautiful headphone you've ever seen? You can it see. It does look pretty good. Well, it, it looks has like a happy bulb, touch right? on the side. What's that? It looks like a bulb with a with a shorter stalk, with a shorter that, stem. That is literally all we needed from them. We just <laughs> needed the stems to be shorter. Do I have my Rudy at an Giuliani? angle, a jaunty angle? I thought it was going to be stemless, though. That was the wasn't that the? Uh, that's for no, the pro. Just, that's for the pro. They're trying to make the pro one stemless. Is the right. Pros are going to be thinking. stemless, just in ear. These are going to be redesigned, but they were saying that they were going to have shorter stems with with the tip, with the AirPods Pro tip, which I I, I think. But I don't honestly, see the tip on AirPods. this picture, though. That's 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 why I'm happy. That's that's why I'm convinced now more than ever that Tim <laughs> Cook clearly listens to this show because this I product see. is exactly what I described last week. Look, you have no tip. You've got the shorter stem, and if you can, can I can I blow it up here? Look at this. Now it's getting all wacky tobacco on me. Uh, don't you love it when you zoom in and the image starts getting smaller? <laughs> what the hell? That just, doesn't sound how right. Does, how does that work? Uh, so you can see they have the haptic touch area right there on the side of the AirPod. I would be over the moon, delighted, if this is what the HomePods or the HomePods. <laughs> if the HomePods Shh. end up looking like this, I would be confused. But if the AirPods end up looking like this. I would be extremely excited. This is exactly what I was hoping. That the only thing I was thinking that they could do more than this is just contour the stems here, right? Make them a little bit bendy so that we could have them look more like the, uh, let's see, the AirPods Pro because they have that great contour that hugs your face. I can't show here. There we go. Perfect. Right there. Look at that beautiful contour. It makes you look like your jaw's a lot stronger than it actually is. <laughs> That's a nice touch right there. And uh, the one thing that I'm excited will finally be long gone is this look. I don't even know how you spell Giuliani. Is it Julie, Giuliani AirPods? I don't know. AirPods. Let me just bring up this image. There it is. <laughs> this is you on AirPods. <laughs> Hard to tell what you're laughing at without being able to see the picture. Yeah, you guys don't need to see it. Let's see here. You know, that picture of Rudy. Everyone's seeing it. Here's here's what you think you look like with AirPods on. Here's what you think you look like on AirPods. Here's what you actually look like with AirPods in ears. <laughs> what you think when you're walking down the street feeling cool. Reality right there. And uh, see ya. Yeah, I'm 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 showing a picture of uh, Fabio and Ruli Giuliani with his AirPods inside of us. Uh, I see. Thank you for questioning that because for our, our audio listeners, they probably have no idea. We got to remember to describe stuff on this, uh, on this new visual medium. We got to remember to describe stuff. So <laughs> you <laughs> think that you look like with Fabio words. with his shirt, just just <laughs> loosely open, chest bustling. But what you really look like is this picture of Rudy Giuliani with his AirPods sticking out due north and uh, directly east. Not a good look. So that is the uh, the AirPods update. Um, oh wait, do we have more than that? No, those are the two uh, AirPods story. Let's uh, let's move on into our let's move on into our one more thing event coverage here, Leander, because the invites are out and. Uh, we think we know what we're going to get here, huh? We're going to get a few interesting products that we can dive into here in just a sec. Take it, take it away, Leander. Yeah, so get ready. Uh, Apple sent out the invites on Monday to the unprecedented third product launch event. And this almost will certainly be the debut of Macs running Apple Silicon, the company's own processes. Uh, and we'll almost certainly see the long-rumored AirTags. Uh, and uh, it's titled One More Thing, 
The November event is scheduled for 10 a.m. PST Pacific Time on Tuesday, November 10th. So next Tuesday, 10 a.m. Yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Okay, so this this did come out Monday. This was Monday that the story yeah, came out. It seems I, like forever ago already. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I honestly <laughs> thought this was last week, and I was like, have we already talked about this on this show? <laughs> uh, because life comes at you fast these days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This was Monday. Holy moly. I cannot believe that. Yeah, so we have an event coming next week. Uh, I'll be live streaming the event live on my YouTube channel, I believe. Did I say I was going to do that? I believe I said I was going to do that. God, you can just see. I, I, I'm My brain is just totally fried. You're losing it, dude. Get yeah. it together. Yeah. Get it together. Yes, I am. I'm going to be streaming this event live on my YouTube channel. <laughs> it just came back to me. I posted... Uh, well, I tweeted about it, and I will post the link in the show notes if you want to catch that live stream. I'm just going to broadcast it and react in real time. Hopefully, Apple doesn't take me down for doing that. I'll probably keep the volume pretty low so that I don't violate any YouTube rules or anything, but I consider it fair use. I'm going to be adding the color that the One More Thing event really is going to need to spice it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And so let's talk about expectations, okay? So... It looks like we're going to get at least two MacBooks, probably one MacBook Air and per perhaps two MacBook Pros. And there was a Bloomberg article that came out this week with the Germinator describing the, the, the contents of the keynote and what kind of hardware that we can expect. Let me pull up my notes here. Why am I looking at this? Uh, where did it go? There, there we are. Okay, good. <laughs> so... Let me just dive into the story. Apple and overseas suppliers are ramping up production of three MacBook Pro laptops with Apple processors. A new 13-inch MacBook Pro and a new 16-inch MacBook Pro and a new 13-inch MacBook Air, according to people familiar with the matter. So coy. The Those first people. Mac processors from Apple will be based on the A14 chip found in the latest iPhones and iPad Air. The, and tests inside Apple indicate improved power efficiency over the Intel parts they are replacing. More on that in a second. The new machines will also have Apple design graphics and machine learning processors. Okay, The company is already at work on a redesigned iMac. The company's all-in-one desktop and a new Mac Pro model, uh, which is supposed to be half the size of the current Mac Pro. So we don't know if that's going to replace the current Mac Pro. Does that make any sense? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, make any sense at all. It's like mini me. It's gonna <laughs> well, be like right, mini me. Isn't the point of having that big box really so that you can put in all these like big beefy video cards, extra drives? You know, it's like you want that space, don't you, to be able to to, to expand the system internally? And if you put it in a smaller enclosure, would you be able to put those like you know that honking big video card GPU card inside that? Probably not, which is why I think this is going to be like a Mac Mini Pro. They're going big on the mini name. And Mac Pro Mini. What's that? The, Mac, the Pro mini Pro. Mini. Mac Pro <laughs> Mac Pro Mini. Mac Pro Mini. There you go. And so they're clearly going to keep the Mac Pro and keep that large form factor, right? I, I don't think it makes sense to replace it with something smaller, especially because Apple has peripherals that you can buy that would never fit inside a smaller Mac Pro. But maybe they could offer a smaller size for a smaller price and have that be like the more powerful headless horseman charge 70% of the cost or maybe 60% of the cost. I don't know if that's what they're going to do. I'm just hypothesizing here. But if German's saying they're coming out with a half-sized, a pint-sized Mac Pro, it's not going to replace the current Mac Pro, I don't think. It's probably going to be supplemental to what they currently do, which to me indicates a Mac Pro. Pro Mini. And that's something that I would certainly... I don't know if I'd be full masked right away. I'd have to look into it. But, I mean, stiff breeze for sure. Let's hear. The other part of this story is Apple engineers are currently working on developing... Okay, I just covered cover that part. Okay, so here's the other piece that I thought was really interesting. Okay, so these are going to contain Apple's silicon, right? So silicon. Silicon. I've been doing some sniffing around... And we know that Apple Silicon is going to be is going to be tuned for really great battery life. That's one of the main strengths of Apple switching to their own chips, right? But 
the A14 platform is going to be modified for A14X, right, which will be what is placed in the iPad, and or the iPad Pro, I should say. But there will probably also be an A14T variant that will be used in probably the MacBook Pro, maybe even like an iMac or something. And we saw some extrapolations by Luke Miani. Is that how you say his name, Louis? Luke, Luke Miani. Is that how you say it? I, I, I would buy it. Okay. Luke, Luke, Luke Miani. Looks legit. Okay, let me pull up the old browser view here. Okay. He did some extrapolations, and he looked at the increase in performance between, like, the regular um, A14 and what would probably be present for the A14 X, right? Which is the iPad variant. And from his extrapolations, he was saying that the A14 X, which is probably what they'll use in the iPad, if his extrapolations are, are correct, and they could be wrong, but this is interesting nonetheless, would be as fast as the 8-core uh, Intel chip that is being used in the current-gen MacBook Pro. This is the same 8-core chip that I bought in my current MacBook Pro, the 16-inch. I should say the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And I spent well, I spent well over $3,000 for that machine. And you will, from a CPU perspective performance like single core multi-core speeds there are other elements of the cpu that may not be as good but from that perspective the ipad pro the next gen ipad pro if it uses the a14x might be as fast as a macbook pro and extrapolate that further you change that to an a14t variant where apple is not passively cooling it and is putting it into a macbook pro where they can actively cool it with fans juice it up with some more voltage right get it nice and juiced, that thing could be an absolute powerhouse. If the, if the iPad Pro A14X is, from a CPU perspective, going to be as fast as the 8-core 16-inch MacBook Pro, how much faster is the A14T going to be when they actively cool it and put that in your next 13-inch MacBook Pro? <laughs> but his 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 extrapolation here is looking at the same percentage of performance improvements from one generation to the next, right? Right. Yeah. So, but it looks like on this graph that you have that you shared in the notes here, you know, you've got it's got the A8, the A8X, the A9, the A9X, the A10, the A10X, and the jumps aren't, you know, they don't seem to, they're not consistent in this graph anyway, right? Well, they're not, like a, they're not linear, I'm, right? They are, yeah. they're logarithmic. So more power equals a bigger jump in perfor performance. Hey, you look kind of pasty. Think, how dare you? I look pasty? That's a serious <laughs> insult coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. This is what you get for streaming from a PC. <laughs> don't ask me what happened. So I don't even know. What was the last thing that you guys heard? And hopefully it doesn't happen again. I was sitting here, and then all of a sudden, my monitors just go dark. And yet, I could still hear everything that was being said. I could hear Leander talking. And I was like, uh, dude, can you still hear me? Because my monitors have just churned off. And he said yes. And then moments later, my PC decided that it was going to take a five-minute breather. Was this and when so you built yourself? You keep bringing that up. Like, that's substantive i don't keep bringing it up <laughs> every time uh, something could that goes, possibly I, be relevant time i've mentioned it. every time something goes wrong lander's like is this the pc that you built yourself <laughs> it's the number one you. how did that's a natural question i don't appreciate your insinuation you're being a bit defensive there i think that i must have hit a raw uh must have hit let me tell you uh, let me tell let me tell you some about something about the cult commander it's running like a top <laughs> It's it's probably as close as you're to get to performance Clearly. of a MacBook of a MacBook Pro. We have even more viewers now than we did before. How is that possible? So wait a second. When we went off the air, our viewership went up. <laughs> I think we may have stumbled onto something. <laughs> Maybe we should <laughs> stop talking. Check out, the Check out this train wreck. People love people love things. You can watch people go around a racetrack just waiting for the crash. This is hilarious. That, that's that's truly funny, yeah. So our our viewership just went up. This this can't be right. It's saying that our viewership went up like sixty people <laughs> since we went offline. Okay, maybe that is right. So, all right, guys, 
we're just going to jump back into it because I, I don't know what happened. And uh, we've got lots of other stories to cover here. What, what, what were we even talking about? I don't know. Does anyone remember? Uh, well, we just finished that last piece. Apple Silicon Max. Oh, yeah. On the Silicon, we're, we're about to go on to the um, AirTags pans. Okay, thank God. The, the crash actually uh, saved us from rambling on about that for too long. So, <laughs> so the other thing that we're expecting here is AirTags, obviously. The long, the long rumored AirTags. Now, I don't know. Is anyone excited about AirTags? I yeah. genuinely am. Okay, all right, good. So, Leander, why are you excited about AirTags? Because uh, you're losing you know, your stuff and your mind? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to attach one to your I, mind? I, the first thing I do is stick one on the TV remote. Because every time I sit down and watch a TV, i got to spend like hours looking for the TV uh -huh. remote. Uh huh. Yeah, so I lose the TV that, remote. That alone. They need to make a version that will let you find your, uh, your, your Apple TV 4K remote. If you don't have a 4K, you can go to heck. But for your Apple TV 4K, they need to make one where you can find that tiny little remote. But according to John Prosser, so just as a precursor, according to John Prosser, this AirTags tech is, it's not a product. So most people are thinking of AirTags as a product. It's the AirTag, right? No. The product that you've seen so far, it is going to contain the technology that Apple is going to weave into a ton of different stuff. And this is why I think this is exciting. So not only are you going to see this just in AirTags, you're going to see this technology weaved into your new iPhone, into your MacBook Pro, into all your Apple stuff. I think it's going into everything. So you'll be able to locate anything that you own in the Apple universe very easily. But they're also going to be creating these tags that will allow you to attach them to other things. And if you haven't caught our show previously, this ultra wideband tech is hyper accurate. Like it's supposed to let you locate your stuff within one foot and it will tell you like where it is. Like, you know, it's to your left, it's to your right. It's not going to be like, like current tag technology where it says your tag is in uh, a general 25 foot radius of where you are. And then you have to walk around playing that hotter or warmer game. No, it's going to be hyper accurate. Okay. But beyond tracking technology, let me, let me pull this up. Where is my okay? Here we go. Let me pull my notes. Let's 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 hope and pray. Are we recording this by the way? Oh yeah, I got worried there for a second. <laughs> uh, according to, well, let me just dive right into this. Okay, so according to Patently Apple, they have some new patents. And we're going to cover these in just a second here. Okay, uh, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office published what Patently Apple has dubbed a master patent application from Apple regarding the future of AirTags products that go far beyond two size options. A master patent is when Apple reveals a grand overview of an upcoming product line. Did you guys know this? I, I didn't know this. I don't know this. I think they've made this up. I don't have a, yeah. never heard this <laughs> it before. It does say what, uh, what uh, Patently Apple has dubbed. Hey, by the way, it says cast has stopped recording, just in case that matters. Um, just in case that matters. That does matter. No, it says it's recording on my side. It just says you're gone from the room, Lewis. Great. That's okay. <laughs> so, Lewis, I, I was like, hey, don't worry about recording your own audio. Remember when I said that? Yeah. <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. And who talked me into that being a bad idea? Was that you, Leander? No. Was that was that you, Golden Ears Lewis? I think it might have been me. Ah, oh, Lewis Wallace. Medium-sized Lewis Wallace. You're wise beyond your years. Paint you green, <laughs> put some ears on you, and you'd be Yoda. Okay. <laughs> That was that was sage advice because you might have just saved my keister on that one. Okay, so let's um let's go into this patently Apple story. Let me see if I can find it here in my show notes because I uh when I restarted everything got all mixed up. Oh, there's Kenny G. What a looker! <laughs> what a looker! Okay, I'm going into a browser view so you guys can see some of this uh some some of this Apple stuff. Okay, all right, back to my notes. Using the detected wireless signal and using location techniques techniques such as time of flight, received signal, signal strength, triangulation, an iPhone may be able to determine the position of the tag using an absolute location of the smartphone from GPS and the absolute location of the tag as well. The tags are supposed to be accurate as close as one foot away, possibly even less. Apple's patent further relates to the overall network environment that includes uh, tags, smartphones, computers, and other devices that facilitate the locating of tags as well as numerous other features and functions. There's also a tag for a air tag lanyard. Let me see if I can find that. Air tag lanyard. So that this is what you would attach to whatever device 
you're going to be carrying around. Like this would be this would be the one for your keychain, right? Am I in browser mode? Yeah. This would be the one that you carry on your keychain, right? So you would never lose your keys again. Uh, an array of wirelessly located locatable tags, also referred to hair within, <laughs> I said that way wrong, <laughs> as what? wireless tags, Jeez. or simply tags, may be positioned or fixed with respect to various regions along the user's body in order to track motion and monitor a user's posture. So here's where things start getting interesting. Not only are these going to be used potentially for smart devices, right? And, and here's a smart device that like disconnects itself when you tell it to from a certain range away or uh, when you get within a certain distance of something, right? So there's going to be hyper accurate distance functionality that would be built into these things. But they have all these other kinds of use cases for them like this one you can see from this from this patent it's it's measuring someone's posture so perhaps you could attach one of these to your back and there's like a posture app that will tell you you're not standing right or maybe it will measure how you swing your golf club or how you swing your tennis racket you're starting to see where this is going right more than that here's an example where it's attached to a person's body and they're able to interact with something inside of a game. So maybe the new Apple fitness app, right? You can attach these things to your body and the app can measure how well, how well you're doing the exercises, how mm. correctly you're doing the exercises, gym apps. Maybe it can measure your gym te techniques. So you're not going to be a huge lunk in there. Just like, ugh, ugh, like yelling at the top of your lungs but only moving your weight one or two inches at a time because your form is so bad. Or perhaps these could allow for a really cool AR experience where you're able to control a virtual world. If you hold one of these in each hand and it's able to read how you're moving your hands around or your body around, you could create a whole, ki whole set of AR interactions with these AirTags or with this AirTag technology. You're starting to see where this is going. Like this is way far, far far and away way more than anything that we've been told that these are going to do. This is an entire ecosystem of, of functionality, things that we never thought that these would be able to do and, and go way beyond just me finding my keys or mm. me locating my so they oregano could, you bag. Know, double as like a, you know, Wiimote or um, uh, the, the, the controllers, you know, the AR controllers they have in the Oculus Potentially, so like yeah. Connect, right? Microsoft Connect wasn't that what that was called? Uh, Thing that yeah, except that mo that that measured your motion from a visual perspective, but right. these would have an element that you hold in your hand. It, it's actually it's exactly like a Wii remote, except way more accurate, way way more. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if that's true, uh. but more spatially aware, I guess, because it can track your movement as you're swinging your arms around and doing all that kind of crazy. It's gonna be really there. accurate if it's doing things like measuring posture. It'll it'll have to be really really accurate, won't it? Because what, isn't that sort of measured in you know millimeters? This is why we have the special cane sauce on the show for points just like this. That's a great point. There's uh. no way it can be accurate only up to a foot away if it's measuring posture. That's like, you know, that's got to be an inch level type of precision. Inch oh, level precision. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to think <laughs> of all sorts of other possible use cases. You know, I don't know. Yeah, so if they can use this to measure your posture... And what's this thing uh, that Apple, apparently Apple made up about some kind of master patent where they <laughs> reveal the grand overview of a coming product line? I mean, that's the thing about patents. You know, they're, 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 not, they're, they're never, ever um, blueprints for mm -hmm. Apple's products. I mean, they never, ever, and Apple's never, ever, like, you know, laid out the entire product vision in a patent. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, there are clues there, and often, um, you know, they, they make a lot more sense when you go back and look at them later. Uh -huh. Like uh, 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 in in the light of what actually came out, I mean, they're, they're really that you know that it's a legal strategy. They're defensive, basically. Huh. You know, it's like if someone comes along, they uh, and you know they, it allows them to obviously protect their own technology, but this also allows them to do you know trading. If other people want to license this still, or they want to license someone else's patents, they can allow them um, you know uh, to 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 uh, uh, 
I, I, I'm totally losing my track of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody dive in and there's save a, me. There's a whole bunch of different stuff they use patterns for, in other words. But they're never, never bl bl uh, product blueprints, ever. I get what you're saying. It seems strange that they're like, hey, here's our master plan. Here's what we're going to do. I, I think that maybe what happened here is patently Apple looked at all the different patents and then they pieced together the master plan. This, oh, is, a really, this is a really long story, so I, 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 can't, uh, I can't say for sure. But there are a lot of different patents that are weaved together in this story. And it looks like they're going through each one and saying, okay, it might do this, it might do that. Here's Apple's whole plan. I mean, but, but looking at some of these images, I mean, this is a great example. This image shows that AirTags are going to do way more, or the AirTag technology, way more than finding your keys. I mean, first of all, look at that guy's calves. Those are like an <laughs> 8 out of 10 right there. Some would say those look a lot like my calves. I should get you guys a picture. <laughs> but beyond, besides that, since that's a total tangent, I could probably do a whole episode on that calf, calf health. There's a secret. There's a secret to getting them to be large and looking like Popeye's forearms. But look at how slightly he's leaning forward, and air tags would be able to measure that. That's pretty cool. I mean, especially if they enabled some kind of like AR functionality that might actually make AR useful in some way. Anyway, look, I don't know. I don't know Apple's master plan. I know one thing. Anytime we suggest features on this show, they somehow miraculously end up in some kind of Apple product. Now, look, that could speak to the power of our analytical minds. That's certainly a possibility. Maybe we're just so far thinking of the future that we're able to figure out where Tim Cook is going. We see the puck before it gets there. That's one possibility. The other possibility, and I think this is also equally as likely, is this is Tim Cook's favorite podcast. And he <laughs> listens to it religiously, religiously <laughs> every week <laughs> with the design team in tow. And they get ideas from us because they know that we have the ears of hundreds of people. And those are some solid sales right there. What do you think about that, Lander? Mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that I've really dazzled you with my <laughs> analytical power. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's it. Is that all our Apple stories? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It feels like that we ran really short because we just did part two where we came back from the crash. But uh, <laughs> that's it. That That's everything. So, of course, I'll repeat real quick. We're going to be live covering all this stuff from the Apple keynote on uh, what day is this again? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. It's on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Okay, worth re worth repeating. Tuesday at 10 a.m. I am also going to include a link in the show notes if you want to hang out with me while I live react to everything that's announced and we could kind of hang out together, assuming the Republic is still here. <laughs> at this point, you know what? I really just don't know. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But I think that we should go ahead and wrap it up there. Can you guys hear the music? How about now? How about now? Finally, a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a nice level, nice and pleasant. Ah, let's just all have a moment of zen. Okay, that's all the cult cast we have for you guys this week. But if you want to come, reach out to us on Twitter. We're all there. I'm at Airfon, E R F O N. Lander is at L K. Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This has been the cult cast, the best 30 plus minute Apple conversation you're going to hear all week long. New episodes of the cult cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you guys mm, next time. I don't think they can hear us anymore. Don't say anything bad though, Lander. I haven't... Wait, no, I haven't muted it yet. Don't say it. I can, I can tell what you're about to say. Don't say it yet. Hey, hey you know one. what? Oh wait, I, Lewis I, is still on the screen. <laughs> How does that happen? Need to need to take a clap. Oh, we gotta do a clap. What? Hey, I'll have this. There we go. You're gone, Lewis. I can't see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs>